There should not be one billionaire in America. None. And I'll tell you why. Because there is nobody that works hard enough to earn a billion dollars. And my argument is this. The two jobs I did in my life that were physically the most demanding and mentally the most difficult that I ever did paid me the least amount of money. One was going through buds, and I challenge any billionaire to put up with six weeks of that shit at $62 every two weeks, you know? And the second was right before I went in the Navy. I had a job with the Minnesota Highway Department, a couple bucks above minimum wage. I worked for the bridge crew, and you know what my job was? I worked a four-day work week, 10 hours a day so I could have Friday, Saturday, Sunday for the weekend. You're 18, of course you're going to do that. But I worked 40 hours in four days on the bridge crew, and guess what I did? Ran the 80-pound jackhammer. I challenge any billionaire to, to run the jackhammer for 40 hours one week and tell me he works harder than that. No, he doesn't. That's why I believe there should not be a billionaire in the world. That was incredible. You just listened to former Minnesota Governor Jesse Ventura make a very simple yet compelling case against the existence of billionaires. And what he said there is apparently resonating considering the fact that that rant is now going viral on TikTok. And I think that the reason why it speaks to people so much is because it just makes sense on a visceral level. So consider this. The CEO to worker pay ratio was about 20 to 1 back in the 1960s. And since we are told that we live in a meritocracy, it's not true, but since we're told this, well, it makes sense to equate pay with productivity. So you'd have to assume that back then CEOs worked 20 times harder on average than just regular employees, which is a pretty insane proposition to accept in the first place, right? But consider this. Since 1978, average CEO pay jumped by 1,460% according to the Economic Policy Institute, which means that CEOs are now paid 399 times more than average workers. Ask yourself, do you believe that CEOs are working 400 times harder now than they were in the 1960s? Does anyone actually believe that CEOs ever worked harder than average workers? I don't think so. But as absurd as that ratio is, most CEOs are not even billionaires. Sure, they're multi-millionaires, multi-multi-millionaires in some instances, but most of them are are not actually billionaires. Billionaires are an even smaller subset of the population. In fact, the total number of billionaires is estimated to be 3,311, according to Visual Capitalist, with a plurality of them living in the United States, totaling 975 in total, mostly living in New York, and California. Now, most of these individuals own multiple companies. We're talking empires here. So this includes the likes of Elon Musk, worth $151 billion, at least according to when this estimate was taken. Bill Gates, worth $106 billion. Warren Buffett, worth $97 billion. Jim Walton, worth $57.9 billion. Mark Zuckerberg, worth $57.7 billion. Now, billionaire is a word that gets thrown around a lot, and we all know that to be a billionaire means you have a metric fuck ton of money, which is an actual unit of measurement, by the way. I'm kidding, of course. But I want you to truly comprehend how much money that is, because it's difficult to visualize that amount of money. But what I want to do is share this video that is almost 10 years old. It went viral back in 2012, 2013, 2014, around that era. And it helped me realize just how enormous that amount of money is in actuality. So let's watch and then we'll discuss when we come back. Here is $100,000, Conrad. Here, that it is, there it is. That's a lot of money. That's okay. what we can hope at best to make in a year you know, doing really fucking well after taxes, that'd be crazy to make in a year, right? Right. That's a lot of money. All right. Now we have someone named Amhai who is top Twitch donator of all time. He has like probably a billion dollars, right? Right. There are people in the world with a billion dollars regardless. Okay. Anyways, a billion dollars, that's a big fucking number. We can see that there's a lot of zeros on top of the hundred thousand, <laughs> but we don't really feel it. 
You don't really feel it until you go like this. Maybe you know it's 10,000 times more, but here. One, two, three, four, five. That's 500,000. Copy paste that, that's a million dollars, okay? Then we go, we have to go two, three, four, five. That's five million. Let's copy paste that. That's 10 million, okay? Let's copy paste the 10 million. That's 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 million dollars, okay? Let's copy paste the 100 million. Okay, that's 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, 800, 900, a billion dollars, okay? And now I'm I'm high and I'm gonna donate soda pop in a hundred thousand dollars like this. Is that the delete key? Yeah. And now we're gonna try to X. find we're gonna try to find the money that we're missing now. Okay? It's on the right. It's on the right, I see it. There it is. <laughs> you saw it, it was right there. But it's kind of hard to feel it. If I put it somewhere in the middle, you guys probably wouldn't find it. But you know what? You wouldn't find it for sure. Let's donate $2 million to my good friend, Vinruki. And he could... Actually, let's donate this... Let's donate fucking $4 million. He could probably live a swell life with $4 million. Here, I'm, I'm, I'm high. I'm giving Vinruki $4 million. Real quick. $4 million. I actually do not notice it's gone. I can never find it again. It's really difficult. You know? Because it's just lines missing. I'm not going to count my lines. There's so many. Jesus fucking Christ. I could actually... Hold on. Let me... Real quick. Let me buy like the most expensive fucking Bugatti or like limited edition Lamborghini for $2 million somehow. And let me just drive it over to like a valet. Let me leave it there. And I'm going to get really drunk and I'm going to just... Uh, I'm going to go home with my friend. And I'm just going to leave the Lamb Lambo there, man. I don't even want to pick it up. Because you know what? Next day, let's buy another one. Okay, we got another Lambo. It's cool. This one has a nice... I like yellow. You know what? I don't like yellow. I'm going to buy green. Okay, green Lambo. Okay, you know, hold on. Let me just... Normal price Lambo. Let me buy a normal price Lambo for like five of my friends. It's like 300k. Okay, 300k there. One friend. Two friend. Three friends. Okay, let me buy it for the rest of you. There you go. You guys all have Lambos. Oh, wait. I want another Lambo for myself. Let me, okay, there we go. We're chilling. Okay, let me see if I still have any money left. Hold on. Looks like I got a little bit. So that kind of helps to put it into perspective, right? When you're talking about a billion dollars, spending 100,000 is similar to us spending pennies. We don't even realize that we're missing those pennies. But then you scale that level of wealth to Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos, and they have more than 100 times that amount right there that we just watched. So we're talking about sums of money so incomprehensibly large that it could probably sustain someone for more than a thousand years if human beings could live that long. Like it would be difficult to spend all of that money even if you tried after you bought multiple mansions and multiple super yachts and a private jet and luxury uh, vehicles and a couple of sports teams and uh, you bought a private island or two and you took a trip to space, you would still have so much money left over that most of us wouldn't even have a taste of what that amount of wealth feels like. Now in truth, money is fake. We made it all up. But within the confines of our capitalist system, money is finite. It's a resource that is limited, which means that battle over resources by its nature is a zero-sum game. And billionaires earning more money is the direct result of exploitation and working class people losing money. The empires that these individuals undemocratically lord over weren't built exclusively by them. Their workers are the ones who are responsible for their success. But regardless of how productive the workers are in these instances, despite them making capitalist owners like Elon Musk and Bill Gates rich, they don't get to share in the fruits of their labor. The rich people, the billionaires, they took it all. As Jesse Ventura was saying, it's impossible to work hard enough to earn a billion dollars. And he's right. So how exactly do people become billionaires in this current context? Well, if you can't feasibly earn that much, then they're not working hard. They're not working harder than anyone. So where does this money come from? Well, they steal it, obviously. And they keep getting an increasingly large share of the pie. And it's to the point where average workers, 
They don't even get a small slice of the pie. They don't even get crumbs at this point. What workers get is an infinitesimal amount compared to some of these CEOs. And the existence of billionaires isn't just problematic because their existence is inherently immoral. Their existence also poses a threat to democracy. Because as the New York Times put it, the issue with billionaires is not that they're sociopaths, though certainly some are. It's that their power comes with no accountability. They dwell or don't dwell, as is often the case, above the clouds in super tall skyscrapers. They fly to private islands on private jets and do God knows what there. Their yachts remind us that no matter what the paperwork says, they're citizens of no nation. That if we try to fix them in place, they can just go elsewhere. They become in enamored of certain ideas, fixing African agriculture, resurrecting von Mises and Hayek, terraforming Mars, being the president, and can spend nearly unlimited sums in pursuit of making them a reality. Even if they fail at any or all of it, they will remain billionaires, and there's not much you can do about it. They're not elected to the role, so you can't vote them out of it. Very well said, in my opinion. So think about the implications of this, the implications of the existence of a billionaire. They can spend money to buy off politicians and entire political parties. They can take over massive news organizations. They can control social discourse by purchasing social media organizations. And these aren't just like hypothetical examples that I'm bringing up. We've seen it happen. These are things that they are doing currently, and there's nothing that we can do to stop them. If a billionaire decided to buy YouTube tomorrow, they could fundamentally change this platform that we all use and love, and there's really nothing that we can do about it. It's their world, and we're just living in it. Now, you might think, Mike, I mean, there are things that we can do. We can pass laws taxing them out of existence. We can have a wealth tax. We can invoke antitrust when they go on these purchasing sprees and try to rein in the amount of companies that they own. And look, you're right about that. I support all of these policies. But the problem is when they control government and media and social media, to say that this is a David versus Goliath situation would be an understatement. See, it's so hard to put the cat back in the bag once it's out. Once we allow human beings to accumulate that much wealth, well, that's a level of power that is almost impossible to rein in. And remember, in a capitalist system, wealth directly translates into power. So allowing people to get that rich in the first place, that's where we as a species, I think, went wrong. But despite the media manipulation and capitalist brainwashing that we've all been subjected to since we were children, people are beginning to comprehend that this is absurd. This entire system is genuinely absurd. And people are tired of living with crumbs while these rich fuckheads have it all. Hence why I think videos like the one that we watched are so popular. Because even if these billionaires hold more power than us, the biggest disadvantage that they face is that there's far less of them than there are of us. And once people realize the power that we have collectively at the macro level, well, that's when billionaires are really in trouble.